right? Yep. All right, our final type of reaction is double displacement. Now, for most of you, my guess is that this is the one that's probably the most challenging. And it makes sense why it would be that. There's a lot of steps to do. So I have two reactants, okay? Um, I have potassium carbonate, and I have zinc two nitrate. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through, and just like I did for single displacement, I'm gonna figure out the charges on everything, because I wanna know what the charge of everything is. And three of these things I know, okay? I know that um, potassium always has a plus one charge. I also know that if I look at my red sheet, carbonate, CO3, always has a two minus, whoops, which is proof that I just messed up that formula. There we go, that's better. Okay, carbonate always has a two minus charge. Okay, zinc, I don't know, it's a transition metal, it can change, okay? Um, but nitrate always has a one minus. Okay, again, we can go through the process of solving for what the charge of zinc is, but we're gonna add a one, we're gonna cross, okay? Well, when this one crosses up here, it's negative one, which is the charge, which means that this two, when it crosses up, it's gonna give zinc a two plus charge, and that is the charge of zinc in this case. And that makes a whole lot of sense, because if zinc has a charge of two plus, and each nitrate has a charge of one minus, and there's two of them, that would balance out and add up to zero, okay? so. We have our charges, we can go ahead and get started. Now remember, when it comes to doing this process, we're gonna do it exactly the same. We're gonna cross what's bonded to each other, and we're gonna make sure to cross charges along the way, and we'll worry about state symbols at the very end. So, I'm gonna leave potassium right where it is. Here's our K. I'm gonna leave zinc right where it is. Here's our Zn, okay? I am just gonna switch where these two guys are, okay? So now nitrate is gonna come over here and bond to NO3, okay? And now carbonate is gonna come over here and bond to zinc, okay? Again, let's cross charges. We know that uh, potassium has a one plus, nitrate has a one minus. That's really nice because positive one and negative one will cross to make one and one, so we don't need to do anything, okay? Zinc was a two plus, carbonate was a two minus, Okay, well that's also really nice because we know that two and two will cross and reduce to form one and one again. So both of our formulas on that side are actually in really good shape. So I'm gonna go ahead and erase those just so they don't confuse us when we go to balance. Okay, next we're gonna go ahead and balance. And I'm gonna get rid of all these charges just so that way we're not getting confused at all. Okay, so let's go ahead and balance. Um, I have two potassiums here. So I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna make two potassiums here. Okay, um, if I look at carbonates, just to go in order, if I look at the carbonates, I have one group of carbonates right here, and I also have one group of carbonate ions right here. So those are balanced. My zinc, I have one here, and I have one there. And then finally, my nitrates, I have two here. I only had one, but this two distributes to both, so I'm 100% good to go. I'm gonna go ahead and balance. Now. The most tricky part about double displacement is in fact the rules, the solubility rules that are on here. So what I have to do is I know that one of these two has to form a solid. And remember, a solid on our solubility rules either says I for insoluble, will not dissolve, or it says SS, which means slightly soluble, which means it kind of dissolves, it kind of doesn't. So I need to look up these two things. Well, this first one is really pretty easy because rules one and two apply to both of these things, and rules one and two both say that they're going to be soluble 100% of the time. So rule one says potassium always is gonna dissolve in water, and rule two says nitrate is always gonna dissolve in water. So this guy right here is AQ, okay? If at any point you're like, I don't get it, okay? Remember, AQ is the same as S in your table. Okay, if it says S in the table, which stands for soluble, that means it will dissolve, we write AQ in the formula. Okay, and then finally is this guy. We need this to form a solid. If it doesn't form a solid, we literally did everything for nothing, and now we can write no reaction. Okay, so we're gonna look this up. Okay, there are no rules about zinc. Um, there is a rule about carbonate though, okay? Rule number five says that carbonates are insoluble. And if you're like, I don't know if I buy that, well, then we can look at the table too and, and use the table. So if we go down to zinc, okay, and we go over to carbonate, which should be the third one over, so very bottom line, third one over, we see an I. 
and I stands for insoluble, which means that this guy is gonna form a solid, and our reaction works. Had this thing formed uh, something that said S next to it on our sheet, we would write AQ, and then we would write a big no reaction because it wouldn't happen, but because we're lucky enough to have that S right there, this reaction is good to go. Good luck.